Hello everybody and welcome to Bull Technology. For the past many years I have used Adobe Photoshop CS3 as my main photo editor. Yes, that's right, I have been using a 15 year old piece of software to edit all of my thumbnails, channel art, and video graphics. But in 2018, with the release of macOS Mojave, Apple stopped supporting 32-bit applications. This meant that I would no longer be able to use my ancient version of Photoshop. And ever since then, I've kept an old Mac around just to use Photoshop. So this past month, I decided to give a new piece of software a chance. I decided to use Affinity Photo, and today I'll be giving it a review. In the interest of full disclosure, Serif Software isn't sponsoring this video, and all of the opinions you are about to hear are entirely my own. So let's get started. Before we get into today's review, I have two major disclaimers. Number one, I am not a professional. I probably use about 10% of Photoshop's features. I mainly use layer, scaling, and text features with the photos I edit. So if you're expecting me to go over all of Affinity Photo's features, then look elsewhere. This is going to be a casual review. Number two is more of me addressing an obvious question. Why didn't I just upgrade from CS3 to Adobe Creative Cloud? Well, I have two main reasons. The first is I hate Adobe. I could go into more detail, but I'll leave that for a future video. Number two is simply the cost. For Photoshop alone, Adobe charges $21 a month to use. This is absolutely insane. In contrast, Affinity Photo costs $54 to own indefinitely. The cost of Affinity Photo is equivalent to only two months usage of Photoshop. Simply put, I can't afford Photoshop. Okay, so now on with the review. Affinity Photo is a professional photo editing piece of software developed by Serif, a UK-based company. Affinity Photo is available for iPadOS, macOS, and Windows, and retails for $54.99. There is also a free 10-day trial of Affinity Photo, which I will be using for this review. Because I am not a professional, I decided to judge Affinity Photo by replicating exactly what I do in Photoshop. So I will be attempting to create three image files in Affinity Photo. A YouTube banner, a YouTube thumbnail, and a simple YouTube logo. If Affinity Photo allows me to make the exact images I made in Photoshop, to me, it passes the test as a viable replacement. We will first start by creating a YouTube banner. Before we get into actually using Affinity Photo, it's worth talking about the user interface. The user interface is modern and clean, and things are placed in a pretty common sense location. It's not identical to Photoshop, but things are similar enough that you should be able to find things pretty easily. Creating a new image in Affinity Photo is incredibly easy and there are a wide array of options. I'll be creating a 1440p blank image file as the canvas for our banner. YouTube provides a banner template tool that allows you to see how your banner looks across many platforms. We can open this image file in Affinity Photo and instantly see the robust amount of layer and scaling options available in Affinity Photo. Opening my logo in Affinity Photo and overlaying it on top of the banner, we can see that scaling works a little bit differently than in Photoshop. Scaling is done by grabbing the corner of an image and pulling it inward or outward. This is much quicker than finding scaling options in the file menu. The array of selection tools are also excellent. When it comes time to export your photo file, there are also plenty of export options and quality adjustments to suit your needs. Now on to thumbnail making. Using all of the tools previously mentioned to create thumbnails are all incredibly easy, and this time there are some additional tools that can make your photo editing even better. Color correction tools are almost endless, and they go far beyond what even I know how to use. Uh, there are also a wide variety of brush and shape tools at your disposal. Uh, finally, the text tools and effects allow for quick text styling and logo creation. This brings me to logo making, and I understand that Photoshop isn't the ideal logo maker, 
but it's what I used, and I'm happy to report that the same logo creation can be done in Affinity Photo. Using some of Affinity Photo's selection and layering techniques, intricate patterns can be created and used. Using Affinity Photo's brush and shape tools allows for text to graphics manipulation. Overall, I'm sure if you can think it up, Affinity Photo can definitely deliver. Fellas, I could go on and on about Affinity Photo's features, and in the future I might do a more in-depth review. But much like Photoshop, I've probably only covered under 10% of Affinity Photo's features. It's an incredible piece of software at a discount price. And if you're looking for a Photoshop substitute, at least give Affinity Photo's trial a spin. I'm sure it will more than deliver. I'm only one week into using Affinity Photo, and so far it's done everything I need it to do. I still have a lot more to learn, but in all honesty, I love that. So after my trial expired, I decided to purchase a full copy of Affinity Photo. And as far as Photoshop is concerned, good riddance. So as always, be sure to leave a like, a comment, and definitely subscribe. And thank you all for watching.